good. Alrighty. So first thing we're gonna do is launch ZBrush Core Mini. I'm gonna see how far I can get. Do do do. -do. So, and you know what? As I'm going through this, probably what I'm gonna end up doing is uh, wondering where all my ZBrush stuff is. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna to try to do a little bit of problem solving too because I think you can get quite a bit done in ZBrush Mini, ZBrush Core, I think. So first things first, uh, in this one, in ZBrush, you'll have a little gear icon. You can say, hey, just show me this if news is updated. In this one here, uh, no option. You can minimize it, which I don't know if I'd wanna do that, but you can go ahead and just exit out of that. Um, here's that nice clean interface, that clean UI everybody's been looking for in <laughs> ZBrush. So here you go, you got it. Um, just what you need in ZBrush. And uh, yeah, let's get started. So we have a sphere option and a block option. Now, when you click the block option, it's gonna to wanna to start a new project because you can see over here, there's no subtools. So you just have one thing to work on and you can just work on that and that's it. So this is essentially gonna load a new project with a block in it that has, say no, uh, surface noise applied. And that makes it look like it's uh, carved out of rock. And one more thing too, let me grab, I'm gonna open up the help docs or the documentation here. Uh, let's see, CG, ZBrush. There we go. So, uh, okay, we got this thing here. You know what, I'm gonna start with a sphere. I don't wanna save any changes. Uh, that automatically has symmetry turned on. If you wanna turn that off, you can turn it off and on over here. Um, it is just X symmetry, so no radial symmetry or X, Y, or Z symmetry. Um, and over here, you're gonna see, this is my camera orientation. So you know what, let's go ahead and just start making a head here. So I'm gonna go in here to clay build up. No clay brush, just clay build up, that's okay. And we're gonna go through here, we're gonna hold down Alt, and we're gonna kinda of shave off the sides of this head right here. Now you're also gonna see behind the brush here, there's like a little, there's a slight little red rubber band. That's Lazy Mouse. I don't see any Lazy Mouse control in here. So that's just on, and that's okay. We can, it kind of evens out your stroke a little bit. Um, I think that'll work just fine. So we went ahead and shaved off the sides of our uh, head there. And actually we can actually use this as a way, uh, to, as for reference. If we want to make a head, we can just look right up here uh, and orient ourselves in space and use that as reference for a head. So while I'm forward, if we go over here and we turn on the floor, you're gonna see that Y plane, there's X, Y, and Z. So you have all three axes in uh, ZBrush core mini here. I'm just going to keep Y on there because that's going to show us our floor plane here. Uh, and if you hover over this, you're going to see the floor grid is shift P is the hotkey. And if you hold down control, that'll give you a little bit more information. So the built-in help menu is still alive and active in here. Now, the first thing I want to do, or I would want to do, I think, is um, I'm a hotkey junkie. And I'll, there's a bunch of uh, brushes over here that I could absolutely use and assign hotkey to, but I don't think you can. So we got our standard brush here. So if I hold down Control, Alt, and tap, it's gonna say, hey, press any key combination. Yeah, okay, cool. I'll do Alt S, or maybe just S. No, that's draw size. Um, I think that's just some code in there that doesn't actually do anything. I'm, I'm gonna assume because yeah, I can go over here to clay brush, tap Alt S, and it doesn't do anything, so. Oh, okay. Um, let me see. Streaming, recording, ZBrush Live. I don't know why it wouldn't be on YouTube. YouTube says online, at least on Restream. Maybe there's a delay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. In fact, let me close all this stuff down. Don't need all this stuff open. Cool. Um, so another thing you're gonna notice is if I go over here, so you have perspective turned on. We have this Y axis turned on. I can probably explain that when we start making our head here. So again, I'm shaving down uh, the head through here. I'm gonna switch over here to our move brush and we're just gonna kinda, you know what, I'm gonna turn off perspective. I like, I, I don't like working on perspective, in perspective anymore, I should say. Uh, so we got our head kinda started here. There we go, we got our head shape. So I'm kinda looking up here and we're gonna devise our head. Now I'm gonna kinda start sketching on this head. So we're gonna go over here to standard brush, uh, hold down alt. Oh, and I'm tapping S to go into draw size here. You can also go up here and change the draw size like so. I think this dynamic, if you double click that, 
is going to make it so that here's here's my draw size is going to be this big and when i zoom in it stays that big and when i zoom out it stays that big so the draw size itself doesn't change depending on where your model is i think that's how that works uh, but generally speaking i probably want that also i'm just going to double tap that and make it so that as i zoom in my brush size stays uh, the same size relative to what I'm working on. So uh, again, tap S, make this a little bit smaller, and right down the middle of the head is going to be our eye line. Right above that is going to be our brow line. And then, uh, so we're going to have our hairline here, hairline, brow line, nose line, and then chin. And I really wish I had a hotkey for move, but we're going to hop over there and we're going to grab that little move key. So this is going to be the start of our head. Now you're going to see uh, you know what, I'll go back over here to my clay build up and we'll go ahead and just beep, 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 build this up for our nose here, hop back over here to move, and then we got a face kind of started. Uh, so now that I got a head, I can explain this a little bit better, I think. So you're going to see with this Y orientation selected, um, it's going to behave, you know, I'm, as I'm doing my navigation here, you've got, this is classic navigation, you just click in your document and move around and it'll rotate your object. Um, if you hold down Alt and tap in your document, it'll pan and then let go of Alt. It'll zoom. So that's classic ZBrush navigation. Uh, Right-click navigation is you can right-click any. And so here, let me do this. Here's a tablet properties here. We got mapping. No, we got our pin here. So as you can see the top is middle click, the bottom is right-click. That's how I have my uh, tablet set up. So on the bottom here, I can right-click. Uh, so I'm going to right click anywhere in my document and I can rotate. And in classic, I have to go out of here inside my document. If I'm over my brush or if I'm over my uh, model here, uh, that's going to want to sculpt so I can't navigate. However, if I right click, I can navigate over my model. Uh, I can also hold down Alt and pan over my model and let go of Alt and still zoom in. However, you can also use Control and right click to zoom in and, and that can be done anywhere. You know, you can zoom in over your object and then Alt to pan your object, and then Alt, and then just right click. So Alt, right click to pan, right click to move, and then Control right click to zoom. And I think that's right click navigation. There may be more intricacies. I use both depending. So when you're very close to your object here, um, obviously class is not gonna work that well unless you go out of here inside that safe action, and then you can move out with your classic. Uh, but you can also just use right click and it works just fine here. Uh, but anyway, that Y rotation here, uh, it's going to rotate just like you would expect. However, when I go to the top here, you're going to see when I start uh, rotating around, it wants to rotate in the Y direction the, along that Y axis. So again, if I turn on my floor here, you're going to see that little green line. Y is up and down. X is the red one, left and right, positive and negative X, and then Z forward. So basically in ZBrush, Z forward, Y up, just like in Maya. Um, however, when I'm at the top, and I'm rotating around, it wants to stick on that Y axis. If I go to XYZ um, and I rotate around and I pull down, um, it's just gonna rotate how I'm used to in ZBrush. So I'm just gonna probably leave that on, but that's your preference there. Uh, yeah, so that's basically it. Here's some brushes we'll cover. Here's uh, opening and saving projects and then exporting images and OBJs in here. Z intensity, uh, I think is U in your keyboard you can go up here and change it or just hit you on your keyboard and low medium high this is going to get whenever we get our so here's our current active polygon count is 128 um, we're still below the low threshold so we don't need to worry about that and if we go over here and we turn on our poly frame which is shift f uh, you're going to see every brush except for a couple of them uh, have uh, sculptors pro so when i go in here to my standard brush and I have a very small brush size, you're gonna see it's a very dense mesh that's gonna create. If I have a very large brush size, it's gonna create a less dense mesh, so it's just transforming on the fly. In fact, if I go in here to snake cook, you're gonna see as I pull this out, uh, it's tessellating as we go. And then again, the smaller my brush, uh, the more detailed that tessellation is gonna be. So we could use this to pull out appendages and stuff like that. Um, we got pinch. I guess we can go ahead and turn it off. Now, now here's another thing you can do. Uh, if you wanted to, uh, instead of going down here and decimating down like this, you can actually, you know, make your draw size pretty big. Go over here to your standard brush, drop your Z intensity down to zero. And then if you just kind of rub over your mesh here, you can make it all one consistent, uh, 
resolution if you wanted to. I don't know if that'd be super helpful to you. Uh, that's another way you can control uh, kind of testimating. What you would do in ZBrush, you can testimate an object. Uh, this is kind of the same thing. You can just set your Z intensity to zero on any of the brushes that will allow it. And then you can bump that back up. And then you're back uh, kind of to where you started. Like so. Uh, and then hold down shift. So it's shift is going to have automatically. So if I hold down shift, uh, that's going to smooth. And then you're going to see if I sh hold down shift and smooth over a thing that's already, um, that has higher resolution. So this is pretty high resolution. Then hold down shift. You're going to see it's going to get lower resolution. So it does have a built in, uh, I want to say it's an undivide size in big ZBrush, regular ZBrush. So that's kind of interesting. That's built in there. Uh, but as you can see, Clay Buildup has it built in, Standard Brush has it built in, Inflate does not have it built in. So you can kind of get in a bad state uh, with this because there's no Dynamesh in here. So if you if you really inflate wildly, you're gonna get some really, really uh, bizarre geometry that you're gonna have to go through and smooth out. Um, so be careful with that one, I suppose. Uh, pinch uh, has it built in, and then uh, Move does not, and that's the same as in ZBrush, Move doesn't. However, Snake Hook does. You know, so if you're gonna move something out, you can also you'll also you always use your uh, snake snake hook brush here. And then slash is going to uh, it's built in, and you can go through here and you can dig in. So we can do some robotic stuff today. And of course, H polish also has it built in, and you can use this in conjunction with pinch to get you some very nice hard surface uh, stuff going. Also, uh, we don't have an undo slider in here. However, you can hold down you can hit Control Z Control Z to undo, and you can also just hold it down. So Control Z. Go all the way back, and you can just hold that down. You got a ton of undos in here, and then also Control Shift Z will fast forward through. So Control Z, you can just hold it down and go all the way back. Um, no slider or anything like that in here, but uh, you still have some decent control. Cool. What's up, John? Um, this is the this is ZBrush Core Mini, so not even ZBrush Core yet. Um, this is going to be ZBrush Core Mini to start with, probably hop over to ZBrush Core, and then uh, depending on how far I get, maybe we can just hop into ZBrush at the end. Uh, is there a link that compares the Core versus Main? ZBrush wondering if this would be a good class starter for those who can't afford the Main version. Yeah, I think there is. Let's see. Core Mini, the right one for you. So yeah, here's all the yeses and noes of ZBrush Core Mini and ZBrush Core here. And then ZBrush Core has a bunch of um, a bunch of other functionality on, on top of uh, ZBrush Core Mini. So we'll do a couple of different things. If you guys have any um, suggestions on what you would want to see made in here and see if we can do it. Uh, of course, you can make anything in here. It's just how, how creative you want to get with your problem solving. Same thing with ZBrush Core. Um, and we can give that a shot. Uh, so uh, Morpheus says, I want to say the mechanical score was super useful. Love the UV and baking session. Thank you. Uh, ask if you want to try Blender. I have. Uh, I use them all. And I am going to stream on Thursday. I'm not sure exactly what time, but I should be streaming on Thursday. But uh, thank you. I'm, I hope, I'm glad that uh, course was useful. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I should probably go in here. My usual. So YouTube here. Uh, playlist, there we go. And then also, speaking of ZBrush and new ZBrushy stuff, uh, this is my. <laughs> Forgot I did that. Uh, so if you go to my uh, YouTube channel here, you're going to see there's a new and updated uh, ZBrush in here. So you can go through here and it's uh, 50 videos. ZBrush 2021.6, I think, is the latest. So I think I've got all the information for 2021.6 to just kind of start out in ZBrush. This is big, big regular ZBrush in there if that interests you. So that's, I think, the newest thing I did. And this will be the introduction to ZBrush Core Mini and ZBrush Core, which I haven't really messed with in a while. I do have a ZBrush Core quick start somewhere in here. It's a yeah worm and an apple here. So here's the old ZBrush Core kind of get started, you know, if you want to get started in that. Uh, and I think ZBrush Core you can actually get for free with like some Wacom tablets that you buy. Um, ZBrush Core Mini you can get right now. In fact, let me find that. There we go. All you need is a Pixelogic account and you can download this for free. And 
start making stuff like we're gonna do so back in here also let me sorry i'm just opening up a bunch of stuff right here i'm gonna go to um let's try and find anything and again if you guys have any suggestions on what might be interesting to be made in here i'm all ears i'm all for it hmm And there is no, okay, so this is interesting. There is, if I wanted to match something, if I wanted to bring in like an image uh, that I could overlay or like do a see-through, I don't see a way to do that. And as well uh, as in ZBrush Core, you do have access to the floor images. So you can go through here and you can add images to the floor and here you can't. However, I do have a program. Let me see, more, run it, called Quadro. Uh, let me see here. This is Quadro Reference Viewer here. I'll link you to this. And the reason I bring this up is this will be a way for you to uh, have an image over anything. Not, not, you, can, you can use it in Photoshop. You can use it in ZBrush Core Mini. But you can go through here. And so I'm going to click. I, you can't really see this, but I'm clicking on uh, that icon. I'm going to say Add a Local Image. And then we can just bring in an image. So if I wanted to bring in a, um, let's bring in a head, images. <laughs> so I'm just going to bring in, I'm just looking for a plain old, uh, you know what? There we go. Save image as to my desktop. There we go. So I'm going to go to my desktop here and there's a head.jpg so I can bring this in. So this is in Quadro, it's not in ZBrush. However, what I can do is I can zoom in and it's an image reference viewer. You can save uh, you know, images all over your screen and then save a preset. So it'll kind of uh, save in there. So I'm gonna kind of zoom in here and I can also hit T and then make this less transparent. So I can actually use this as a way uh, to have just image references over this. And I have to go over here to Quadro and I have to go over here and say under settings, I want to always on top and then settings lock images so now that I have that I can actually have an image over my ZBrush core mini and uh, I'm good to go so that's one way you could go through and you could uh, have reference in ZBrush core mini without having to resort to image planes and stuff like that uh, I say okay we got our standard brush here and then we're just gonna go through here I'm gonna hold down alt you know what? I'm just gonna hold down alt and we're gonna make uh, a cavity in here where the mouth is going to be and we'll make lips in a second and then of course yeah the cavity where the eyes are going to go and then here is our brow ridge here and then we've got here's our hairline that we already had built in here's our cheekbones so we can just kind of go hold down alt this is where our cheekbones are going to go and then our ear is going to go between the brow and the nose here our nose is about where it should be and of course we have that lazy mouse kind of turned on so Go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. We got our chin, and then of course we'll add a neck and stuff like that. So this is about how, how much I'm going to use this. Uh, but you know, it's interesting if you want to use that. In fact, there should be. I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that. Um, I think I've got a couple of videos on it. Mike Pavlovich, that's me. Oh, there it is, YouTube. So, how, so, how do you use the quadro reference? Aren't the so there's, there's me actually using the thing. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, and then now we're back where we started. Um, yeah, you use clay brush like Raptor said. Is there a special reason you don't use clay, <clears throat> clay buildup much? Um, I don't use, I don't just make, I don't make a whole lot of things. So, if I made a bunch of stuff, uh, I might use it more. Uh, do you ever consider using ZBrush good for blocking out characters, something often done in software like Blender, Maya, etc.? Um, yeah, I only use ZBrush for that stuff. Blocking out characters and any other program is too slow for me. 
Um, I do, I can do it, um, but I do everything in ZBrush because it's much, much faster. Um, what's the difference between this and PureF? Well, uh, and, uh, I don't know. I, when I use PureF, it's usually like a contained board that's like a board that has to be somewhere on my monitor and then I put stuff in it and then I can like label it and stuff. Quadro isn't a board. It's just a bunch of images you can put anywhere on your screen. So if you have like right now I have ZBrush in the middle of my screen and I have a bunch of empty space around it. So I can literally put images all around my screen um, instead of behind it. And um, and then I can do stuff like, you know, put trans a transparent image over the program I'm using. I can rotate it. I can flip it horizontally. I can knock the transparency down, I can freeze an image, I can lock an image, all that stuff. I, you may be able to do that in uh, PureF. I, I've just never used PureF like that. Usually when I use PureF, it's here's my board, here's my images, here's my titles, and that's about it. Um, character artists, all those new character generators, is there any future for us? Uh, nope, we're all done. Wrap it up. <laughs> Same thing with anything. Um, oh, let me see. Well, my volume should be okay. My mic's picking up quite a bit. Anybody else having a volume problem? Cool. Um, yeah, and yeah, so there is, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, the same thing with environment art, you know, you can photogrammetry everything until you can't, until there's, there's gonna be a lot of stuff you can't photogrammetry. Um, or you can't capture, you can't scan. Let's go in here to clay build up here. And so we've got our head here and we've got our nose. I'm gonna go over here and I'm, so I'm gonna get kind of good, I hope, at finding where these things are so I can uh, uh, find them a little bit easier so I'm not having to, because usually I have my hotkeys and I don't have to take my eyes off the off of here. So, okay, so from the front of the head to the back of the head, about halfway down, is where your eye line is going to be and then your brow line straight back to your nose line is going to be your head line here so you can actually go through here and you can oh, okay yeah there's no masking in here so you're just left to your own devices as far as yeah i really want to control b that clay build up uh going through here and just you know it's it's a pure it is a brute forcer of a sculpting program you can go through here and you can move uh, and all that good stuff, but no masking or anything like that. So we're just going to use our move brush and we're going to start pulling this back here. And there's no insert mesh brushes or anything like that or appending to a subtool. So it's literally just going to be moving this stuff around and then again, go in here to clay build up and then we'll go grab these cheekbones here and then go back to our, let's use slash three. That way we can kind of start defining where these features are going to go a little bit. And then we'll go ahead and pull out that chin. It's kind of a weak chin. It's not a bad thing. We're just going to kind of define it a little bit more. And then if we want to decide to do a little bit of a weaker chin, we can do that. And of course, we want to always think in the rounds. We're going to go ahead and, you know, the middle of the eye is down where that corner of the mouth is going to end up being. And then we're going to want to pull this back. Same thing with the, the eyes here. You know, you're going to have your brow line. It's going to step back the upper lid, lower lid, and then... Uh, your cheekbones and stuff like that. So here is this. And then we can go back through here, hold down shift. And again, this is un, undividing. So it's actually getting a little bit lower res when we do this, uh, but it should be okay. You know, we're just kind of dealing with volumes here. That's right. And because we do have Sculptors Pro built in, we can go over here to our snake hook. And then when we go through here and we start pulling this out, this will be uh, Tessa, Tessa mating on the fly, tessellating on the fly. Uh, so that's useful to you. If you don't like using Sculptors Pro, you can still use Move. Just be, keep it, keep in mind what you're gonna have to do is, you know, if I go through here and I start moving this stuff out, you're gonna see that poly frame's not going to update. So it's gonna kind of start stretching your polygons. Not a huge deal. Um, just keep in mind that it's gonna stretch them temporarily. So if I go through here and I start doing, okay, let's go ahead and do kind of a bust. So we're gonna go through here, we've got our our neck in here, and we've got our shoulders, and then our back through here. These are these polygons are getting kind of stressed. So obviously, while we're going through here, if you start sculpting, uh, it'll still update because you now this has Sculptors Pro turned on, so it's going to be the same size here. And then as you go through here, it'll try and keep it the same uh, density 
of your mesh here. Uh, but remember, you can also go through here. You can hold down Shift and, oh, actually, Shift doesn't. It will undivide, but since these are already bigger, it's not going to undivide lower than this. Uh, so what you could do, again, if you wanted to make these all even density so your sculpting is a little bit more predictable, you can drop that Z intensity down to zero on your standard brush and then just go coat this in your standard brush here. And then bump it back up. There we go. And now, if you hold down Shift, then it'll slightly undivide because it's going to be at a higher density. Okay, now I'm remembering how Sculptors Pro works. It's been a while. Something like that. Um, cool. Uh, I don't really have a favorite 3D printer. I have an AnyCubic Photon that I've um, I got set up and then ran through some practice stuff. And let's drop this Z intensity down quite a bit. And then uh, it had to keep gathering dust because I keep getting busy with other things. But um, one day, eventually, I will 3D print something. Speaking of 3D printing, once we get to a certain point, we'll go ahead and uh, get, we'll export this model out uh, or whatever model we want to end up making. And then, um, it's going to look like a mummy here. I kind of wish there was a clay brush. I'm not a, I guess we can keep dropping that intensity down. So in ZBrush, you know, I can go through there and I can change the stroke uh, to kind of smooth that out a little bit. Of course, we don't have that option in ZBrush Core Mini. So the brush is a little bit smaller, maybe. So again, relying on just sculpting brushes to problem solve is uh, it's a little new to me. It's not my usual go to. But you know what? We'll give it a shot. So um, we also don't have uh, like a Damien standard. We do have a slash three. So if you hold down alt with these brushes, of course, if you just pull, push in, let's go ahead and crank that the intensity up. Yeah, you can cut in and then you can hold down alt and you can pull out to a surface. So if we use that, we can actually go through here and we can start um, kind of building in an upper lip and then a lower lip here. So you can kind of use this to start defining uh, some of our features here. And then around the nose, you know what? Let's just go ahead and here, and then here and back around. And it's gonna be a little, and again, hold down Alt if you wanna start looking at these, uh, dialing in some of the planes of the face, because we do have H polish, so we can actually go through here and we'd be like, okay, we've got uh, the mouth, which we can't ignore because we went ahead and pushed in um, a big hole here, but we can go through here and we can kind of move it about to where it's going to end up being. And again, we don't have masking, so it'll be interesting to see if we can't. We do have inflate, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and pull this lower jaw in here a little bit here. So again, let's go in here and inflate just a bit, and then we'll go in here. So we don't have trim dynamic, but we can use clay buildup. You can go through here and you can hold down alt and you can kind of use this as kind of a trim dynamic. And then again, with our slash brush here, we can go through and we can define uh, borders here. So if I want to go along this cheekbones here, I can hold down Alt and I can pull up to a ridge and then down here. And then I can go back in with my clay buildup brush and I can go through and I can build this up a little bit to that ridge. And then I can go back in with my H polish brush and we can Drop that size down a little bit. Again, tap S. You can hold down Alt to polish up to a surface and let go of Alt to polish down to a surface. And then if we want to, we can even go in here to pinch. You can pinch right along that crease line here. So anywhere you have a line through here, you can use the pinch brush to kind of go through and define that a little bit more. So there's our upper lip and our lower lip and again I'm just actually I'm just kind of using the pinch brush to kind of define those plane breaks here and then again you can go back in here to the H polish brush and really polish up to those surfaces here so here's the all the way across and you can make this really big and you can Go through there like that, and then uh, go back to our clay buildup here, and we'll go through and just clay build up. So here's where our psychomatic arch is going to go. 
and then our chin I'm gonna go back to our slash three I'm actually seem to be using the slash three more than the actual standard brush I don't know if that'll change over time here but go through here and then clay build up and put a little bit more of this neck here and then let's go ahead and build up these eyes a little bit so I'm going to use clay build up for that again instead of being able to put an actual eyeball in here we just got to brute force it and we just got to go with what our sculpting is going to do and then of course we do have um, kind of a brow ridge here let me see we'll get something that has a little bit more of a, a brow I can look at so we have kind of this brow like this and then you have that orbit that bony part that's going to kind of fold out over here and then go back to our slash brush and then this will be essentially let's hold down alt that'll be where our eye is going to go and again it's going around that volume so you always want to go back here and then go grab your move brush or your snake cook brush and just kind of pull these things back and now we're starting to get to where our active point is actually higher than our low. So you can go through here and you can hit low and that'll go through and decimate down to 150. So now our active polygon points is 150. So that's basically running decimation master in the background uh, to get us to that. Um, is there a different way to render different subtools with different filters? One filter for each subtool. Uh, no, but what you can do is you can save out a, um, what do you call it? Like a clown renderer or a, an I a material ID renderer. So essentially it'll give you a different color for every spot or for every sub tool. And then you can go in and uh, comp that in. So basically, uh, whatever you could render out like 15 different, uh, NPR filters, uh, as 15 different images, and then you'll have one. ID image or clown renderer where you can go and select in Photoshop, I guess, where all the red is, is one subtool, and then you could mask that out, and then you could put in whatever renderer you want under, underneath that, basically. Speaking of rendering, I guess you can save an image. Um, so that's about it in this particular one. Uh, texturing functionality in Marvel Set TV4, it's pretty good. Uh, I have an end of video on that which is here. Actually, it's kind of buried a little bit. It's not just straight up Marmoset, but if you go in here, this 3D look dev, we actually go through here. This is a cool plugin for ZBrush where you can actually bake everything to a plane. And then, go ahead and link this here. You can bake everything to a plane and then you can throw it into, it'll link automatically to Substance Painter or, Subs or Marmoset Toolbag 4. Uh, and you can go through here. So I go through and I texture a bunch of stuff in Substance and then also Toolbag 4. And I think I do think I got some bonus stuff. Let's see here, here. Don't need that. Don't need that. This is called there. You go. Uh, and that's all free on my YouTube channel, by the way. But in this particular one, there's a couple more videos in here. So basically, we go through. We do a. I guess I can't control volume in here. Uh, I do a scarab first, and then we go through and we texture in uh, Substance Painter and Marmoset Tool Bag 4 and render in Tool Bag 4, uh, transparency and all that good stuff. And then we do a truck, and then the bonus is like this little robot guy uh, comping in Photoshop, uh, this multi view gun you can texture at the same time, this guy with a split open head, this from another live stream, and all that good stuff. And you can download um, all the 3D models there too. So if you want, that stuff so again let's talk about this uh, you can check those out it's not necessary though you can just go on YouTube and you can get the get the gist of how to do it but uh, we got our head here and um, <laughs> let's go in here to our move brush and, and you know what I'm gonna use, probably use the move brush more than this the snake hook just because I already know the density of the mesh I don't necessarily want the snake hook brush to add or subtract any density from my mesh. So I may be hesitant to use that unless I'm pulling something out that's crazy uh, like this. If I wanted to do this, no problem. Um, or in fact, we could, you know, let's do this. Let's go here. 
I don't think that there's a. And again, while it's tessellating on the fly, this would be an instance where I might use that. Uh, oh, here's another thing too. So if I hold down shift and start smoothing, it'll start smoothing my mesh. In fact, I can, um, oh, oh, okay. So I can actually create sub tools <laughs> using this method. So I could actually, hmm, let's try that for the eyes. But anyway, what I was gonna show you is if you hold down shift and start smoothing, let go of shift, it'll actually inflate. So that's built into uh, the Sculptor's Pro functionality in ZBrush, but also ZBrush Core Mini, it looks like. So use that to your advantage. And I uh, wonder if we can hack the system and actually have a separate piece of mesh. The only problem is you wouldn't be able to really work around it. It would be a separate mesh technically. So again, like I said, you could you could separate off a mesh here, and then you can go through here and um, you know try and move this mesh into place and inflate it. However, it's not like you can mask it or control shift tap it or anything like that. So I don't know how useful that would actually be. But if you can figure that out, go for it. So we're gonna go through here and we'll kind of do a little bit of a build up here. And again, no no VDM brushes or anything like that. Uh, but here and then, okay, let's go back into our slash brush here and let's, I'm gonna crank up, I keep cranking up the intensity on this thing. Um, so we're gonna have, here's our lip. And again, we're gonna go through here and kind of pull <clears throat> this out and then define that nose a little bit more. There's a labial fold here. And then let's just put like, just like look a little indication here. And then we'll go back into our, you know, let's try standard brush. I want something a little softer than clay buildup. Um, actually, what I really want is a clay brush, but I'm not going to have that. And then also we can go in here and start um, carving out the nose. And then go through here. So we got our lower lip, upper lip. And then uh, we can start making big changes too. Again, I'm gonna go back to our move brush here. You can use snake hook for this. Uh, just be careful on your brush size and it getting rid of some of your, getting rid of some of your um, details there. You know what, let's go extreme. Let's go through here and uh, Very weak chin or very strong chin. Now, at any point, um, I'm gonna go through here and really crank out this or knock these back even more. Anytime you can go through here and you can save this out. So uh, here we have open project, here we have save project. So save project is going to save as a uh, GIF, PNG, or ZPR. So if we throw this on our desktop as a test dot, let's try it. GIF, let's see what that does. Sorry, we need to move this over here. There we go, so I'm gonna hide this. So this is the file at output. So here's our GIF, and if we open this up, uh, sure. You're gonna see there's some little sparkly things down at the bottom here. This means if you save this anywhere, in fact, uh, you know, I post this on ArtStation or anywhere you can save an image on Twitter. Uh, they'll be able, to, anybody will be able to download this GIF and this information down here is storing those vert positions. So they'll be able to open this uh, in their program. So that's kind of neat. Uh, you can do the exact same thing with PNG. So if I go through here and I do say project as test.png, it's just not quite as uh, good to look at. It's basically, um, you got a bunch of, all of this is your stored bird information. And then there's your actual image here. So, but both will work. And then uh, of course you can go ahead and just save this as a uh, project. So ZPR, we'll say test.zpr. And this will save as a ZBrush Core Mini Z project, which you can open up in ZBrush Core Mini later. Uh, and you can also use this. So you don't have subtools, you don't have layers uh, to save out different versions, but you can use this just to sort out save out just like a bunch of different head versions or variants that you want to create. Um, another thing you can do is you can go over here, yeah, you can export an image. So if you want to send this to somebody, you can turn on perspective and be like, hey, let me export this as a uh, JPEG. So we'll go ahead and say test.jpg, save. And then I'll go through here and you can go through and you can crop, can you crop left? Oh, 
So in other ZBrush, you can go through here and you can just drag the sliders, but it looks like you can. Yeah, let's crop this. Crop left. Crop top. Oh, there it is. See, now, okay, you can grab these here. I just can't see them. Can I make this wider? Oh, there we go. Okay. You can click and drag in here and move it around. I'm going to go ahead and leave that title down here. Neat. We're going to say okay. We cropped our image. And then here's our test jpeg and last but not least we can go up here to obj so export for 3d printing we can click this on our desktop test.obj save it and i don't think there is an stl in here is there obj yeah just obj however you can load up your slicer and i hope okay uh, nah. let's see here open file desktop obj boom great and yeah fit the size please so here we go and here's our um whoo, let's see if i can navigate in here now uh, here's our head let me make it so you guys can see it maybe but it really wants to fight me on this resizing here. There, ooh, doesn't want to get any smaller. Well, we'll pull this down here. Uh, so essentially what we can do is we can go through here, we can like rotate this around and we can say, you know what, we'll go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. I don't know if this is the best for, um, you know, probably you'd want to put it somewhere like wherever, wherever it makes sense for your supports here. And we'll say, okay. And then uh, screen capture, undo, redo, clone, auto layout, hollow, dig hole, and repair. Okay, so uh, we can hollow this out. So in ZBrush Core Mini, uh, there's no like uh, DynaMesh with hollowness or anything like that. However, in here you can, so we can say, let's go ahead and hollow it out. Ooh, let's say two millimeters. And we'll go ahead and run that. So that when we 3D print, it'll be nice and hollow for us. And you can also do internal uh, supports for your hollowness as well uh, and then now we can go through here and you can see okay there's our hollowness as we scrub through the slices here and then if you want to poke a hole in here uh, let's see size is so five millimeters here so we're going to go through here and say add a hole right here let that resin drain out and if you want to you can go ahead and it'll you can plug it back up and uh, once it's done printing so there's your little hole plug there you can print that out as well and you're good to go so what else we can repair stuff we can go over here we can add supports so um, i guess all oh let's go ahead and select this one got our supports built in there and i want to say it'll do internal supports there you go there's your internal supports external supports i can go through there and you can add them and subtract them manually whatever you want to do but there you go. All from ZBrush Core Mini. Go and 3D print your stuff. Um, hmm. uh, I used to take short time. Now it takes minutes on end to save. Tried uh, stopping autosave. You just escape freezes up until it's finished saving. Hmm. I wonder if there's something in the file that's causing it to be big. Yes, this is ZBrush Core Mini. Um, how to fix some parts of the mesh having lower resolution and wire triangles hard to work with. Um, you can Z-remesh and project, uh, not in ZBrush Core Mini, but you can, if you wanna fix your geometry distribution, you can do that using Z-remesher. Cool. Uh, it's hard to fix some parts of the mesh having lower resolution. Yeah, uh, and a triangle shouldn't be hard to work with, at least not in ZBrush. Uh, yeah, and Sculptors Pro is always on. There's not an off or on. Let's go ahead and close out of this. Um, yeah, and it's basically on for all the brushes except for inflate and move, I think. Yes, that was Chitu Box Slicer. Uh, do auto supports work for you? Usually. Uh, would you want another hole at the top of the head so the resin can drain out? The hole at the shoulders would uh, be so the air can get so the resin can drain. Yes, absolutely. Uh, good point. <laughs> Can you assign ID materials within the same subtool vert wallet? Um, yes, you can. Uh, if they're vert welded, you can always paint vertex color. So it's not going to be super. 
precise, but you can always, in ZBrush, not ZBrush Core Mini, but in ZBrush you can go through and you can use visibility or masking or whatever, and you can color fill, vert color. Um, so you can have a version of your file that's just vert color, and then when you go and render that out, um, that'll be what you can do. Okay, so uh, we got this here. Let's see. Let's just see. Okay, so we're going to go through here. Um, you know what? Let's, um, do we want to go? So again, we've already saved this out. We can start making variants in here. So let's go through here and we'll inflate. And we'll do a, um, let me see if I can get a, I guess that's cool. Let's go through here. Uh, I always want to use my hotkeys. So inflate here. Shift to smooth. So again, we're just going to do a variant here, a little bit heavier. And let's go back in here to our clay buildup. And we'll start knocking this back. Here's our chin. And here's our double chin here. And we can start giving a little personality. So I'm going to go in here too. We got snake hook. I'm, again, I'm going to use move. Because I, I just want to change these vert positions here. And again, I, I'm so tempted to just put some extra subtools in here uh, so I can uh, like do teeth and stuff like that. But I don't think it's going to let me. Now, the cool thing about this is if I could mask, um, I could pull this lip up over the bottom lip and they'd stay separate. Because again, it's not Dyna Mesh, it's Sculptors Pro. So these meshes would always stay separate. Uh, however, getting it to work without like move topological or anything like that is a little bit trickier. Go in here with like little baby movements and then go in there with inflate maybe and see if we can't get these things to, I guess we can leave it open a little bit. It's not a huge deal. We got kind of an underbite there. That's fine. And again, go into the clay buildup. So one thing we were talking about was our ability to make hard surface shapes. Uh, you know what? Let's give them. Let's give them some clothes, maybe. So if we want to just to kind of deal with some hard surface stuff. So if we want to give them like a shoulder pad or something like that. And obviously this is very well set up for organics and stuff like that. But you may not want to print out just organic -y stuff. So let's talk a little bit about some ways around that. So uh, like I was saying before, let's go ahead and give him. A little bit of clothes. So I'm going to go through here and let's go ahead and grab our slash three brush. Sorry if I keep leaning away from my mic. And let's say, <clears throat> say hydrate here. Um, yeah. What's the hardest thing for you in the entire process? You're talking about like 3D printing or uh, just <laughs> ZBrush Core Mini? or just life, life in general. What's the hardest part about, about all this mess we're in together? There you go, give him a little bit of a turtleneck here. We're gonna hold down Alt, and uh, this will be kind of the chest area. So we'll give him like a little sci-fi suit here. And yeah, we'll hold down Shift and smooth that out. And then, uh, you know what, down here, We'll go ahead and give him like a little bit of a chest plate. And then we'll go ahead and, again, I'm just kind of sketching with slash three where I want my stuff to go. And we're, again, we're gonna do a little bit more hard surfacey, uh, kind of a hard surfacey look. So we're gonna go through here and we're gonna go ahead again back into our clay build up. And we're going to just build up to uh, those ridges we put in. And that'll kind of give us that visual separation between one object, quote unquote, not really, but the illusion of that and another. Uh, and in fact, I, I want to keep that low. Can I just use the standard brush? I'm really dying for a clay brush here. <laughs> it gets so lumpy. That's okay. We can fix this with H polish. It's just kind of a kind of a bummer. Let's say smooth all this out. So, okay, that wasn't as beautiful as it could have been. Uh, but we gave it a shot. So, anyway, We've, we've pulled up our ridges and we build up to there. So now I'm gonna go in here to H polish and that's gonna allow us to really look at our forms here. So we can go through here. And again, we're just gonna kinda of use this as a, a way to smooth without actually uh, averaging any vertices. Let's 
boy is this tougher than it should be let's see bigger brush come on you can do it you can do it smooth H polish Ugh. <laughs> okay uh, we'll go back into our slash three I'll, okay I'll get better at this I'm I'm out of practice uh, ZBrush Core Mini in fact this is my first foray into ZBrush Core Mini so bear with me uh, we're gonna, again we're gonna go through here and we've already defined a nice smooth so you know what maybe that's what you need to do instead of defining the portions that you want to be separated go in with your H polish brush first maybe and start defining those volumes if you can clay build up an H polish and then come back in and do another pass where you can kind of do this so this will be a little bit more of that hard surface look here and you don't have to have symmetry turned on this whole time you know if you want to break symmetry you can just tap x on your keyboard to turn it off or just go up here and turn that off uh, and then if you wanted to like i don't know go through here and break one of these horns i'm just going to hold down shift we're going to use sculptures pro to kind of go through and just knock this back a little bit and then we'll use our move brush go through here and kind of blunt this one there you go and then you can turn it back on and then you'll have asymmetry through the horns but symmetry through the rest of it here um yeah okay so then again uh and just like in zbrush if i wanted to do something hard surfacey for concept sketching but i still wanted to go through here and even this out uh, we could definitely do that so there we go look at that pretty decent and then go back in here with our H polish and do one last final cleanup here. Like so. All right, I'm gonna keep trying to do clay buildup. It's, you know what? I think it just requires a softer touch than I usually have patience for. It's like you gotta go through here and really, oh, that's another thing too. <clears throat> so you're gonna see as I'm working, uh, you know, I'm saying I'm working down here on this little tip and then I rotate. Um, let me see if that holds show. So I'm up here. I'm working on this part here, and then I rotate. It just kind of rotates from the middle of my object. If you turn on local, now it'll rotate around the last point that you touched. So I'm used to that, so I think I'll keep that. You know what? Let's crank up that Z intensity on that clay buildup. I like a lower Z intensity for doing like organic shapes, but maybe for hard surface stuff, I really need to crank that up. Here, so we'll put on like a little a little lip on our shoulder pad here again. Okay, that looks a little bit better. So maybe use this to kind of go through here and define again some of these more hard surface shapes. And I guess the challenge is, yeah, what, what can you create in ZBrush Core Mini? And I think you can create just about anything. It just, you might have to Take a little bit more of a roundabout way uh, to get there because again all the solutions are kind of brute forcey you gotta go in there and if you want to make it happen you gotta sculpt it which isn't a bad exercise i suppose and then if you want to clean this up again just go back in here your h polish drop that size down hold down alt let go of alt as needed to kind of polish up to a surface and polish down to a surface and then use slash three Okay, that worked a little bit better than the shoulder pad. <clears throat> you know what, can I crank up the Z intensity on my H polish? Yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. The other bad thing, not the bad thing, the other thing too is um, I tend to use a larger brush size for my H polish brush, which also means I'm gonna lose the resolution. And since I can't dial in the Sculptures Pro settings, uh, I gotta just kind of eat that lower resolution and then have to go in and clean it up. It's not a huge deal though, because again, to clean up these shapes, you can go through and you can use the pinch brush uh, as well. So in fact, I forgot about that completely. So we'll go over here to our pinch brush and just along these corners here, we'll use this to kind of not only pinch to a sharper result, but also to kind of clean up my lines so that they're a little bit straighter. You can see this one's kind of wobbly. You can use the pinch brush here to kind of straighten these out and again no masking so you just got to kind of sculpt what you want to see and then go in with your move brush or your snake cook brush hmm okay okay let's see can I hold down alt with the pinch brush does that do anything worthwhile 
It doesn't look like it. Okay. A little more hard surfaces. Uh, and then, you know what? Uh, we don't have, again, we don't have a clay brush, which is what I would use to kind of put in like a little, like a, I don't know, something to kind of plug in. I suppose we can try to use the standard brush for that. And you can't use like, you can't drag out an alpha or anything like that. So we can go through here. We can put in a little port. Again, just using our standard brush to kind of build this up. I guess you could use inflate too. And then we'll go in here to H polish. And we'll kind of knock that down a bit. And we'll say standard brush, drop our draw size down. And we are getting pretty heavy now, good. So here we can drop this down, we can decimate it down. Let's go ahead and go low. Again, because we're still kind of sketching this out, that's gonna go ahead and pre-process for our decimation master. And then it's gonna drop it from half a million down to 150. I don't see any noticeable change. However, if you go in here to polyframe, you're gonna see you know, decimation master at work. So that way, if, you're, if your performance is starting to get bogged down, uh, go through there and knock that back down and then continue uh, sculpting here. Um, let's see. Yeah, this is the, the, the corest of the miniest. We may hop in the ZBrush core. Eh, we've been in here for an hour. That's longer than I thought I'd last. <laughs> cool, cool. Yeah, and again, if you guys want to download Zebra, all you need is a Pixelogic account and you can download ZBrush core mini and you're off to the races, you can just start. So again, we're gonna go through here. Let's go ahead and just finish this guy out and we'll hop into ZBrush Core Midi. So I'm gonna go through here, and again, he's gonna have, he's, right now he has his eyes closed, which is really just for me to be able to go through here and say, okay, make sure that the eye is wrapping around a round surface here. And then we also wanna leave room for, that's uh, so my bag, that's where you can start having a little bit of fun with it. So we're gonna go through here, we're gonna kinda dial this back a little bit here and then yeah around the nose and we'll go through here with our move brush here and go back in here to our standard brush and then being a little more feather touchy you know what let's go in here with our inflate brush inflate brush is usually pretty a, a soft soft touch uh, so we can go through here and we can use this to kind of bulge out uh, some areas here like around the little node on the side of your mouth here uh yeah i think that'll work so we'll kind of puff out these cheeks a little bit he's very round down here but he was kind of not so round up here so we'll go ahead and dial that in and then here and we can actually you know maybe his neck is a little uh his little sci-fi neck is a little bit tight here so we can kind of bulge up around there and then of course these ears we need to cart start um, blocking them a little bit better so let's go back to our standard brush we're going to keep this simple and go through here and again it's going to be between the brow and the nose we're going to go scooch around here and then pull this in and kind of go through and just start defining uh, again these volumes and let's go ahead and pull this out so we're going to go through here we're going to pull these ears out along here we're going to get that shape about right here. Again, this is going to kind of curve in. And then through here, uh, you're going to have this. Oops, no hotkeys in here. So we're going to go through here and we're going to pump this out. And then this is going to fold around this way. So we're going to follow this in here. So here's our little first uh, little helix. And then this is going to go down around here. It's going to kind of bump out. And then here's your ear lobe. And then you're going to have a little little piece right here and again this is going to keep uh, folding and then you're going to have a auditory meatus little ear hole right down here we'll hold down shift and we'll smooth this out and we'll go back to our clay build up brush here and again this just allows us to kind of Let's go ahead and turn the intensity down since we're not doing hard surface stuff anymore. We're back to doing organic stuff. And again, if you start having 
if your if your computer starts lagging with your sculptors pro you can go through there and you can just decimate it down so that's just a way for you just to kind of get some performance back while you're working and again i don't lose any detail again we're, we're not really super detailed as it is anyway so i just go ahead hit it low again and do that this is zbrush core mini and again this is kind of a just a fun one you know load it up on your tablet or your laptop and just kind of go in there and just have fun kind of sculpting your ideas so if you're on an airplane and you're bored um you know just load this up and then just play around with uh, just some very simple uh, sculpting brushes and it's free you know so it's just like a little app you would download uh, for free anyway so we can kind of use this to kind of go through and play with it and let's go through here again and we'll grab our move brush so it's like sketch it out go through here use your move brush use your smooth brush to dial in whatever you're looking for here and uh, you know, let's go back into our clay buildup brush here so we can get some more resolution on these here so yeah we got this kind of spilling over a little bit and we got our little chin up here let's drop that Z intensity down just a little bit more in this clay buildup so I can get rid of some of his lines maybe a little bit and this is more of a, a feel thing for me I don't know that I'm used to using clay build up this much but you know what's good it'll actually maybe introduce me to uh getting a feel for some of these other brushes that i don't usually use that often and then this one here we're going to kind of pull this up and around I'll hold down alt we'll define this lower lip a little bit more and again this upper lip here I'm holding down alt to kind of build up that ridge and then through here let's go ahead and grab our standard brush and we'll kind of put that little filtrum right here and we'll smooth this out and then for the nose again, going back to our slash three brush this is going to kind of curve around and in so I want to indicate that a little bit here and then this nose hole sorry nostril There we go. And we'll go ahead and smooth this out. A little bit of clay build up. And then for this lip too, we'll go ahead and we use the inflate which kind of taxed that geometry, but as we're going back through it, it's kind of rebuilding it with Sculptures Pro, so that's good. upper lip too and again we can't really hide anything that's okay we don't need to really see inside of there and then back to our slash three and we'll go ahead and dig in right underneath this chin we'll kind of make that pop a little bit more so we're using slash three to kind of dig in and then clay build up to kind of go back in and build up and really honestly if I just had access to hotkeys I think I'd be good to go and maybe a clay brush <laughs> I keep keep wanting to do that oh yeah and then for the eyeballs here we can go through here and we can do um, let's go back to slash three. We'll go ahead and smooth this out. And instead of just having them closed, we'll go through here and we'll kind of, again, we're just going to still maintain where the eyeballs are. We're just going to kind of hold down alt and put in an eye shape. Same thing for the lower lids here. And in fact, you know what, let's go back to our clay build up and we'll sort this out a little bit better. We got these eye bag sections in here but I want to make sure that upper eyelid is out in front
sorry this is more sculpting than I end up usually actually doing when I do stuff again holding down alt and then we'll kind of put in a little teardrop thing there kind of give the illusion of some wrinkles there and then again and I guess you can get good enough here let's move these around a little bit and again if this is just for sculpting and you kind of need to, I guess we'll try the standard brush. Just got to give a little indication that there's actually an eyeball in here. Since we're not really, we're not poly painting. However, we do have color. You go through here and you can change, you know, the color. And also we're using matte cap gray, but you can use basic material. There's no way to change the light on here, it doesn't look like. But, you know, feel free to kind of dial in. You know, if you're using used to using like Chavant NSP, you can maybe dial in a something closer to what you're used to working with. Here's our toy plastic, all this stuff. So if you want to go through and render, uh, in fact, you got a flat color here, so that could be some sort of a, a mask, ID mask. There's no BPR though, so you're gonna get kind of alias -y, looks like, unless on export it does a, a sneaky BPR behind the scenes. And again, let's go back in here to clay build up. I'll bump this back down to low. Um, have you seen a sneak peek of Core 2021.6 yet? Not yet. Impressed with the actual selection of tools, settings, and score menu. Yeah, me too. I mean, if you have just a sculpting thing, it's not terrible. Uh, it doesn't look a bit like Big Fortuna. You know what? Let's do that. Why not? Let me look him up. Yes, so now he has something interesting that doesn't have symmetry. So we can go through here and do something like this. I wonder if I can take a snake hook and wrap that around. Uh, yeah, from the Mandalorian. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Oh, sorry. Spoiler alert. Uh, the chubby version. Let's see. because he has those kind of knobs uh, on the front of his head here. You know, let me see. And you can also go through here and you can pinch uh, as well. I wish I could make this, I wish I could just, if I could just toggle off Sculptures Pro for some of these, um, be a little bit more useful because I don't want to lose resolution, but I could go through here and I could, you know, change this quite a bit. Uh, of course, I'm gonna have to go through and re-sculpt some of this, but I, you know what, I guess it's fine. using that pinch brush instead of going through and using like just the move brush and stuff like that. Um, like I said before, we can turn these into just knobs. And then I wonder, let's see how, how well this works. Because again, I don't have masking. So be very careful. boy and again if we had auto masking the ability to auto mask turned on um, that would be cool for all sorts of reasons but also so that I could go through and again I'm holding down shift and letting go of alt so I can go through here and And the good news is I think you've got like 10,000 undos probably with Zebra's Core Mini if I had to guess. Or something close to it. So if I needed to go through and be like, well, that didn't quite work, but it's like a very friendly 
All right, let's just do it. Let's just go for it. Let me just get you down closer, get you in. And let's go through and inflate you. Shift and let go of shift. Move. I'll go back in for another snake hook. And we'll just do a little flourish. Yeah, and getting these things close together. Oh, that's a nightmare. All right. Inflate force it smooth let go of inflate you can do it it's just gonna be a little rough all right we got something we'll go ahead and turn on axometry again smooth this down go back in our clay brush clay build up here and again we kind of thinned the lips out Kind of give them a bit more of a bib fortuna look. And we're gonna go back in here to the slash brush here. Yeah, I guess his features didn't really change that much, at least on his face. around here got a little heavier I guess he wasn't super smiley looks like he's more like he's grimacing some of these smile lines in here. And one thing I didn't do was play around with this brow very much. So we'll go ahead and we'll fill this in just a little bit more. He does have some pretty, he still has some pretty severe uh, cheekbones, even in his heavier state. I guess that's kind of signature. Redefine these lips a little bit more. Again, he has much thinner lips, but he still has them. So we'll go through here and we'll kind of, again, hold down Alt, let go of Alt, put the little filter in there. And if I wanted to try and match a likeness like I did at the very beginning, we could use Quadro to kind of overlay an image. Um, but I don't know if I need to go full likeness in ZBrush Core Mini, that might be pushing it. I mean, it'd be an interesting test, but this is more just kind of having fun, I think. We'll fill these back out. Yeah, let's really push that in. Alright, 
kind of back where we started. Yeah, getting those meshes close together with uh, tessellation is a bit tricky. But looks like we got our symmetry back close enough. Let's see, his nose isn't this rounded. ears are a little smaller too but you know what I like big ears so I'm not gonna sweat that too much on his head. Clay build up or inflate. I'm trying to get some. Oh, he has a yeah, okay, it's a pretty giant lump on the back of his head. Never noticed that. Is that right? Is that him? Yeah, these are pretty pronounced. Hmm. Hmm. Let's do it. Like I said, we'll use the snake hook so we can tessellate tess as we pull this back. That'll be his lumpy head. And then again, let's go back to our slash three here. can mirror that ear over. Well, in this case, you may want to turn off X symmetry and finish out that ear. <laughs> Yikes. It's kind of going across the form here. seems pretty smooth. I don't see a ton of wrinkles along here. Maybe some indications of some, but he's not like a super smile line type of guy. Let me go ahead and carry these up here. Actually, I'm tending to like H polish more instead of smooth. It allows me to smooth, but just in a little bit more of a controlled way. I can kind of go through here and still maintain some volumes and still get a pretty large brush to kind of get rid of these clay buildup marks. Yeah, let's stick with that. Let's mark that down as maybe a tip. H polish instead of smooth. And again, you can always hold down Alt to H polish out to a form and then let go of Alt.
sitting on here, you know, as, as this thing is, let's do this. Let's say Z intensity down. Nope, we'll keep that up. Standard brush, Z intensity all the way down. Turn on polyframe so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna use this to kind of get a little more resolution where I need it. Uh, it'll still sculpt just fine. Um, it just might have a little bit of a hard time if I'm doing fine detail to find enough verts to start on. So I'm just gonna kind of add some resolution back here. And then we'll go ahead and turn polyframe off. And you know, we'll kind of smooth and divide a little bit here. So uh, as this thing turns, you can go through here and you're gonna kind of indicate like, oh yeah, as this thing is turning forwards, it's gonna kind of squash a little bit here. It's gonna stretch on this side, but squash on the inside. So I'm gonna try to sneak in here and oh, just kind of grab a little bit of this. This is where visibility would come in handy. Get in there. So this will be our kind of, uh, oops, let's turn off axometry. Uh, this will be our squash side. So again, as it turns, it's gonna kind of squish here. And then on the opposite of that squash is gonna be a stretch side here. And that'll just give you, you know, a little bit of an indication like this thing is actually, uh, has weight to it. Let's go back here to move brush and we'll kind of fill this out a little bit. We got that, we can go ahead and smooth this out. And then uh, if you wanna go really crazy with the detail, which he does have, you know, kind of the striated, let me see, shift isn't gonna do it, yeah. Got kind of this going on. It's a little bit of a skin texture -y thing. And again, I'm gonna emphasize that on the insides a little bit more. Boy, it's hard to get in there. Again, you can hold down Alt to kind of pull up to a surface. But again, this is kind of rough to get in there. We can go ahead and fix this with our move brush maybe. Close enough. Let's turn X symmetry back on. And again, his nose is still pretty small. It's kind of more of the same. And I guess that makes sense for a ZBrush Core Mini is uh, there's only so many things you can do in it. So expect some repeat, expect some, um, not a whole lot of, <laughs> whole lot of information. Not my usual uh, spew of ZBrush stuff. It's more like, well, you got the clay brush or you got the clay buildup and you got move, good luck. Like I said, you can get quite a bit done. We'll go ahead and dig out that nose hole here. And if we wanna kinda define some of these volumes, you can just go right back in here, hold down Alt, and then use your H polish to kinda go back in. A little bit of clay buildup. A little bit of smooth and knock it back down. Woo! Uh, as a mesh exportable is an OBJ. Yeah, just go right up here to export for 3D printing and you can export it as a OBJ. Um, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, how would you approach maybe something like wings creation with this limited version? You cannot use hotkeys in this version. Yeah, I couldn't get hotkeys to work. It kind of does. You can kind of hold down Control Alt and click something, and it'll say, "Hey, assign it." But um, couldn't get it to stick. Pop up T. B. S. Nope. Brush. H. Nope. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah, wings might be a tough one. I don't know if I could, uh, <laughs> hmm, you know what I might, because yeah, is there an import? Open project, save project. 
Cancel, let's go ahead and save. Gif PNG ZPRZ project. I'm guessing you probably couldn't open up. Obviously, you can open up a ZBrush Z project, so it'd be, have to be a Super Score Mini. You can't import anything. Yeah, I was going to see if there was a sneaky way you could do it. But nope. I don't think there is. Or like bringing in custom brushes. Or I wonder if you could write a macro where you could, like, um, based on the screen space, you could do a hotkey where it would go over here and tap the brush and then move it back to where you started. That would be interesting. I mean, that's a hell of a workaround just for <laughs> just for Shebers Core Mini hotkeys. Uh, but there might be an interesting way uh, around that. Just using like Windows functionality. Slash. What are you doing on time? Okay, we got about 30 minutes. Oh, looks like a little poly paint got in here accidentally somehow. I wonder how I did that. and we'll boy this is tough boy this is tough let me round this out and I guess it is good practice just to be like hey you know what you don't have any other tools in your tool belt besides brute force sculpting and you can focus in more on like solving your problems with a brush instead of other solutions. I suppose there's value in that too. If you're ever caught between a rock and a hard place, even in big Z brush, uh, brute forcing your way out of it isn't always the wrong answer. Get me back to my roots, my Dynamesh and Clay brush roots. Yeah, honestly, there's just a there's a handful of things I might add or tweak uh, to ZBrush Core Mini just for my personal preferences. But honestly, just for like a pure, again, brute force sculpting program, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Again, I'm probably not the most qualified to even be using this program because I don't use it ever. Um, but you know what? It's kind of fun. Kind of fun to go in here and make some fun stuff. And again, lower lip here, hold down Alt. Another slash brush here. I don't think this is going to go down as one of my best works, but you know what? We gave it a shot. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Slash three brush. And I guess the biggest takeaway for me is just kind of decimating down as you start running into performance issues or it starts getting laggy because you're Sculptures Pro will tend to do that. If it's having to evaluate an entire surface worth of uh, polygons and you're pushing into the millions, um, just being able to go back through here and bumping it back down. And I haven't gotten any, any, any reason to go from medium or high yet, so. 
Um, yeah, yeah, usually I'll keep perspective off and unless I forget. <laughs> yeah, I would say generally speaking, I, I almost never have perspective turned on. Until, unless I'm matching like a camera view or something like that. So let me hold down Alt, my lines in here. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and finish this out. You don't know that he's actually wearing, uh, you know, I guess he is. Oh my God. He's got some sort of weird. Okay, let's do that. So we'll go ahead and keep that line because it is kind of just where that line would end up anyways. But really this is all skin. And then down here is where he has like his, his actual shirt is. So you can go through here and kind of indicate where that shirt is. And then above this, Let's hold down Alt and we'll kind of, oh, we're getting, yeah, that's fine. So here is where his actual shirt is. And then just above that is all this. So let's go in here, let's inflate. Again, standard brush, very low Z intensity. Oh my God. You know what? I think I am getting a little bit more feather touch with my clay buildup. And I, he it does have like some again some he has some surprisingly sharp features for a, a heavier bib fortuna, at least in this reference. But I'm gonna kind of soften him out just a little bit more. It looks a little bit distracting. And I don't have the highest resolution on here, but or this image isn't the greatest, but because yeah, he still has like a still a pretty prominent cheekbone, which I guess can still work. Bump it out just a tiny bit. Uh, let's see. Any Unreal tutorials? Ah, you know, I just have one. Do I? Um, where is it? Let's see, Unreal. It's an oldie. It's uh, loading the free Paragon assets on UE4. How, uh, um, you can check that out. <laughs> I don't know how useful it'll be now, but. Um, yeah, or you, Debbie. Uh, oh my god, well you have time during the stream to show the radial symmetry mirror solution you suggested. Oh, um, yeah, we can hop out and I can give that a shot. I think if I remember what it is, radial symmetry, you can, ba essentially all it is is just having, um, it's kind of the nano mesh plane solution where you put a nano mesh plane where you want your object and then you can sculpt in radial symmetry uh, using nano mesh. That's all it is. It's nothing, it's nothing fancy. So be prepared to be um, not impressed. Um, cool. Thanks everybody. Uh, do I have my own school? No, uh, I teach at CG master Academy a little bit every term, but, uh, no school. Um, pay not to have insert printed brush. Yeah, I think. And you know what, on my next stream on my stream on my channel, I'll probably hop into ZBrush real quick to talk about that, uh, nanomesh plane solution, but uh, for my next stream, stream, I'll go into ZBrush Core. has a lot more features in it, um, but still pretty cheap. Like I said, I think you can. I think I've seen it for free on like some tablets you can buy, and it's it's not a very expensive program. So if you want to get some ZBrush functionality, uh, but not go full ZBrush just yet, uh, there's ZBrush Core, and we'll we'll hit that up in my next stream, I think. So we'll go back in here to Clay Buildup. And you know what? 
Let's go ahead and just, does he have a cleft in his chin? Nope, it's nice and round. So we'll just go ahead and round this right out. A little, little chin there. Trying to think, and if I, he, I can't get my teeth in there, so I can't give him those nice chiseled teeth that he has, unfortunately. But um, and I guess this is where we start the kind of the detail work. For some reason, when it comes to details, I, my, my my inclination is to be like, well, zero mesh it and then subdivide, so I can get some nice details going. I don't usually use. Um, Sculptress Pro for detail work, but I don't, that might just be me being, fighting against it. I don't know that it's, it necessarily has to be that way. He does have some nice rings around here. Let's see if we can exaggerate these a little bit more. And this kind of comes in around. And again, I'm just kind of looking at Basically, let me see if I can get it. There we go. That's a little bit closer. Let me see. Open image in new tab. Okay. Kind of use that as a guide. Let's shove it up over here. Yes. Slash brush in. Whenever you, again, you got a low res mesh, it's having to go and grab verts. If you want to know more about Sculptors Pro in depth for regular ZBrush, uh, my channel has, I want to say ZBrush 2018, what's new? I think it's 2018. It has all, this, uh, has all the Sculptors Pro stuff. And then the only update I think that's been in Sculptors Pro is the ability to turn off visibility. Let's drop that Z intensity down even further, 10. Because again, I just want to build up the surface, but I don't want a bunch of clay buildup lines if I can help it. Yeah, he actually has. You know what? I'm going to lean into it. It's a little more concerned in this picture now that I see it up close. And then slash three. So this kind of pulls down at his lower mouth here. And he actually, this whole thing kind of connects. He's got like a triple chin. Of course, when I do my thumbnail for my social media and stuff, I'll probably take this into regular ZBrush and spice it up a little bit real quick. You know what? And I guess we can do that. I guess that'll be for the crowd that uses ZBrush Core Mini and then hops into regular ZBrush, which is probably a crowd of zero people. But why not? All right, I think we've had enough fun in ZBrush Core Mini for today. Let's go ahead and you know what? I'm gonna, it's just those damn cheekbones. They're just so, that's, that's what the character is, is these kind of, yeah, he's chubby now, but he still has cheekbones, man. It's actually kind of lean <laughs> up here. All right, close enough and clean this up in ZBrush. So uh, like we mentioned before, you can go in here and you can say uh, export for 3D printing. You can export as an OBJ. You can go in here and you can say save project as. We'll go ahead and, you know, we'll do both. We'll do um, bib.zpr. And again, if I wanted to save this, 
as a let's turn on perspective here and put this on social media and other people could download the file if they wanted it. I can go in here to save as project and we'll say bib.gif or gif if you're a weirdo. And we can replace that and then you can post that image here. And then they can just download it. Uh, okay, so we've got that. Let's go ahead and hop into regular ZBrush. So ZBrush Core Mini. Oh, and you know what? We could do this too. We could say, if you guys missed it from the first section here, if we wanted to 3D print this out, let's go ahead and say scale to fit. I don't know if you can see this a little bit better. Oh, wait. We want to open a file. Bib. There we go. And then this one we can just delete. Hey, look at that. We got our guy in here and we'll rotate him around and we'll hollow him out two millimeters. And we'll add some supports over here. There we go. Ready to print. We got internal and external supports ready to go. And uh, I don't know that it would print great, but I don't know. It'd give you something. I guess you couldn't see all that because this is a bigger than I'm capturing here. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and open up ZBrush ZBrush. And we'll talk about that radial symmetry and nanomesh land. So to load up what we were working on, let's see if this works. We're going to say load tool. We're going to go to our desktop here. So we got the, hmm, oh, nope, we're not going to load a tool. We're going to go to file open to our desktop. And we got a bib Z project. Yep, we can load up Z projects in big ZBrush. How about that? And also I can go in here to load tool. Let's actually go to Polymesh 3D, load tool. And you can also grab the uh, GIF. So here's the image. Uh, oh. It's a Z project, not a ZBrush tool 3D mesh file. Well, in that case, we gotta go in here too. What if we could load tools from project using a GIF? Let's try. No. File open. Okay, so we can load it from an image. We just have to do to um, we just have to go over here to file. So I guess when you're in ZBrush, you can save as a tool as a uh, image and send it up on social media or whatever. But, um, all right, so we're in we're in ZBrush now. We'll clean this guy up for a minute uh, in a second. However, let's say we're in here, we hit the comma key. Oh, it's like getting into a warm bath being back in regular ZBrush. So we got our project here. We're gonna go into jewelry and we're gonna make a ring. So we're gonna go ahead and say, grab this ring and we're gonna start doing symmetry. So if we go through here, we can just turn on radial symmetry. So for example, if we turn on our floor, uh, here's Y up. So we wanna have transform here. We're gonna say um, <clears throat> radial symmetry and the Y direction radial count of eight. And now we can go through here and of course sculpt with, uh, oh, hotkeys. We can go through here, we can sculpt with uh, radial symmetry. However, if you wanted to have like maybe radial symmetry on three objects here, here, and here, like in a triangle pattern. Uh, what I would do is, I guess I would start with that object first and then move it into place. So let's try this. Let's go in here to sub tool, um, append, A. What am I looking for here? Cylinder 3D. So we got a cylinder 3D in here and I'm going to just basically scale this down, flatten it out a little bit. Let's turn this on so we can see it. So now uh, I can sculpt with radial symmetry on here. If I want this to be a smoother object, I can go through here and I can say, okay, uh, turn off blur. Let's go ahead and crank up our resolution. Well, first what I'm gonna do is go ahead and say geometry crease and then turn on dynamic to get a nice smooth surface. You can hit D or shift D to turn that on and off. And again, that's over here underneath geometry uh, dynamic subdivision here. So we've creased our um, edges just by going in here to crease tolerance 45 so now we get again that nice instead of faceted we get a smooth result and then I can just convert this to a dynamesh we go here to geometry uh, dynamesh we can say turn off blur crank up the resolution hit dynamesh oops first go up here to dynamic apply so it's real geometry and then uh, dynamesh down here no we don't want to free subdivisions so now we get and sculpt on this object and 
we go in here to transform activate symmetry again y radial symmetry radial count of whatever you want you can do uh, one to a hundred and then we can go through here and we can start sculpting so this is going to be our radial uh, object however I want to sculpt in radial symmetry in a different area. I want to be able to move this and still sculpt in radial symmetry. Uh, you do kind of have like a posable symmetry thing. You also have an ability to go through here that you can try and you can do like this S pivot and clear pivot. So you can set your pivot point here and you can try it, but I don't think you can do it across multiple objects at the same time. However, one thing you can do really easily, you can go in here to ray mesh and you can literally just say, okay, um, I'm going to turn on LSIM, so as I move this up, uh, I can still sculpt in symmetry on this one, and then I can turn on Array Mesh, it's Lock Position, Lock Size, turn on Transpose, hit Y to go into Transpose, and now I can go through here, I can set the pivot if I wanted to like mirror this down here, so I can say uh, Reset, Mirror Across the, um, what are we at, this would be Z, Z, so here we have a version of this that will update on the fly, um, oops, as I sculpt here, this will update, and then you can you can append a new here, and you can say you know rotate this um, in the Y 180. So here's here's four things, but again the only real one is this here when I go into polyframe. So that's one way you could do it. Um, now if that's too limiting, where it's like ah you know what I want to do one here and here and here, but then I want to like have this thing go around the whole band and have multiple copies of it. That's where you have to be, uh, go into probably uh, nano mesh. So you could try that. However, let's go back here to where we have our regular object. And it's like, okay, I want to take this, but I want to have the ability to move this wherever I want and still sculpt in symmetry. So that's where, uh, you know what, let me pull up my YouTube channel here. If you want to follow along, with the real videos here. Here's my ZBrush 2021 playlist. It's getting massive because 2021.5 and 0.6 keep coming out. Uh, so all the way down here is the 0.5 and then here's 0.6 at the bottom. Um, and this has the new mesh balloon and all that stuff. If you if you watched um, this thing here, like the making of you know this koi fish, uh, it's using the new, it's using the new uh, snake curve brushes and uh, the mask mask to mesh creation brushes, this kind of stuff. You can just go, go through here and just make a mask and it'll make it into meshes. Uh, go through here, uh, all sorts of cool stuff. So here's here's the cloth dynamics too. If you missed that, that's, ZBrush, that's still ZBrush 2021. You can actually go up in the ZBrush 2021 uh, videos way up here. And here's all the cloth dynamic and micro poly information uh, from that playlist. So if you're brand new to ZBrush or you're new to ZBrush 2021 functionality, um, here's Again, this is kind of a quick walkthrough of the making of this scene, um, but the entire playlist is here. Like so, but uh, like I said before, if I want this to be able to go anywhere, what I need to do is let's go in here to Z. I prefer to use the Z plugin. There's a manual way to do it. Uh, hopefully, it works. Uh, let's see, Z plugin. Um, no, actually, it's a macro. I take that back. Macro. Here is a uh, create instant subtool. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. And that's going to, it's going to say, okay, move this around wherever you want to. And if I look at it, you're going to see, oh, it's just an object. However, if I go in here to nano mesh, you're going to see, um, if I turn off, turn on show placement, it's just really just a plane. There's no geometry there. This plane is dictating where this object goes into space. So here, I'm going to hit Y to go out of that. I'm going to go into here to gizmo. And now I can literally put this thing wherever I want to. And let's turn off show placement so we can just kind of see. So let's say I want one kind of up here and I want one uh, over here and then uh, over here and then I want another one over here and you could actually use if you wanted to you could I guess you could use an insert mesh with a plane and just kind of put these wherever you want. Um, we'll have this kind of snake around and you can also have it be getting bigger or smaller here. So you're going to see all the nano mesh properties. And again, you can do it all manually, but all the nano mesh properties are set up to where um, it should be uh, the exact properties you need, you know, all, all the fit and 
what is it called? Uh, yeah, fits turned on, size is set to one, all that stuff's already done for you, so you don't have to do it. But again, like I said before in that playlist I sent you, um, you can do it manually as well. I'll walk you through that. So anyway, we have this, and now it's like, okay, great, but I want to sculpt in radial symmetry still. Well, that's when you can go in here to edit mesh, and now you can sculpt in radial symmetry. So I'm gonna turn on uh, X to go in X symmetry, transform, activate symmetry in the Y, radial cut of eight. Oh, nope, I forgot, we flipped it around. So this is actually Z forward, so we're gonna say transform in the Z now. So now we have sculptable radial symmetry here, and you're gonna see it's updating on the fly over here. So you can still sculpt in radial symmetry, and in fact, everything that normally applies the ZBrush, if you wanna go in here, to like a BSH for your snake hook brush, turn on Sculptors Pro and just go nuts with whatever you want. You're gonna see it's gonna update on the fly. Uh, BS brush spiral somewhere in here. Slide, okay, do I know the alphabet? Elemento, is it, oh, there it is, geez, spiral. You can go through here and you can hold down Alt and let go of Alt. So you can twist this one around and twist this one around here. But again, you're still sculpting in radial symmetry. I can go out of edit mesh and then you're back to this, these nano mesh planes and then you can go back into edit mesh. You're still in radial symmetry. Um, and even in here, you can go through here, you can pop in, you know, you do have access to insert mesh brushes, all that good stuff. We're not in ZBrush Core Mini anymore. Everybody breathe a sigh of relief. You can go through here and you can use all the tools you're used to. Go in here with your clay brush. Uh, clay build up, whatever you want to use. And uh, trim dynamic we have now. Yay, let's turn off Sculptures Pro. We can do that. Oh, isn't it amazing? And then you can go through here and again, sculpt what you want while um, working in radial symmetry and uh, anywhere on your object. Again, like I mentioned before, it's not going to be anything mind bending. It's just basic functionality, but that's a way around it. Um, Let's see here. Uh, website you showed you can get free realistic models and nuts and bolts and other hardware. Yeah, that's the um, McMaster car. You can now you may have to have like a CAD program to process the meshes that it spits out, but that's where I would go. Uh, McMaster, yep, thank you, Alex. Um, cool, and if I miss any, they're coming in faster now. Um, true. Be much lighter to print. Yep. Um. <laughs> Blender can use. Damn. Well, let me see. Let me put this right in front of my mouth. Is that better? I don't know why my sound would be down. Well, let me check my OBS here. Did I accidentally touch something? No, it's fully. Well, let's do this. Mike. Properties. Let's add a filter to it. Um, gain. Testing, testing, testing. I don't know. So where I play a UV from a low poly model to high res Dynamesh version of it. Dynamesh version, no, because a Dynamesh is a brand new mesh, so you'd have to UV the, the polygons that are on a Dynamesh. Uh, you might be able to transfer UVs in world space in Maya or something, but... Um, something much simpler, upload a photo of your UV inside where this works or it doesn't. Cool. Uh, it would be something's painter again. Um... Gosh, if I can ever get anything to Substance Painter, I'd have to actually make something to put it in there, which uh, is rare. Um, cool. So we had to lock uh, one of those split screens to a custom view. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think split screen is basically just, it is what it is. Yeah, there's no way to do like a, hey, go up here. I mean, that'd be cool. Up here in a draw, maybe you could like add a camera and move the camera around where you want. Yeah, as of this recording, no. Cool. Huh. Cool. All right. Yeah, sorry about the sound, everybody. Uh, okay, so where's this that we we're going to check out? Oh, yeah. And then I was going to go through here. Oh, sorry, I got to move this away from my head a little bit. 
And then we got three minutes left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here to uh, file, open. We're gonna grab our Z project we're working on. Let's go out of split screen mode. If you're ever in this mode, it's under transform. You can take split screen down to zero, F. Turn on our floor, there we go. So this is where I would immediately go in and do, I'll start doing all the things that I wish I had in there. So here's Z spheres X16. Actually, you know what? This was symmetrical, however, with local, okay, local symmetry turned on, that's why. So we wanna be in world symmetry because, um, you know, with local symmetry, this LSIM right here, it's gonna take the bounding box and this bounding box is a big worm hanging off of it. So uh, we don't want that, but we can go through here. We can add an eyeball. We're gonna say split mass points. We're gonna push these into place here. So now we can have separate objects. And this is also a way to keep yourself um, let's also turn off a line cursor to surface there to make sure that you're working uh, around an object here. So you go through here and now that we have an eyeball, we can go here with our standard brush and we can knock this back or whatever brush you want to use. Let's go ahead and scale this up a little bit. Let's go to unmatch my center. That's another thing too I didn't even realize was uh, you don't have gizmo or anything in ZBrush or mini. It's literally just sculpting. Interesting. And then I guess I guess what I would also do is hit uh, W just because I like working on separate objects until I want to uh, not do that. So I'm going to hit W and hold down control and drag. And I'm going to see if I can't drag up this here. So I'm going to make it its own poly group. Hit control W, control shift tap. You know what, we can use visibility too. Hold down Control Shift, select Lasso, Control Shift, Alt. Here. And let's turn off X symmetry temporarily. So all of this over here, I wanna split. That's a subtool split into its own channel or into its own thing here. Now on this one, I'm gonna do a quick mirror across the x-axis, mirror and weld. Now we got good ears on both sides. I can go ahead and do, um, you know what? We can just go ahead and dynamesh this here. Good enough. Turn X symmetry back on. And now we have, again, this whole guy is here. Let's go ahead and take these eyeballs off of this one. Oh, they're already off. There we go. So now I have much easier access to go through here and like go into my Damien standard brush and go through and just kind of sculpt this around. Uh, another thing I wanted to do Again, if we're getting into like more detail mode, is just the ability to go through here in Z remesh. And uh, you know, I could have jumped into ZBrush core, but it's too late for that. Um, go in and Z remesh this and then start detailing it out so we can get our um, details back with like history project or whatever. Uh, before I do that though, I'm gonna go ahead and pop his head out separately from his body. Um, I suppose an easy way to do this is let's hit Control Shift for slice curve. And I'm just gonna go through here tapping alt I'm gonna slice right along where his head is hold down control shift isolate it we're gonna do another split hidden um, what I could do is I could just cap that off manually let's go ahead and leave that open for now so we have X symmetry turned on I'm gonna see zero measure half uh, you know what? not half let's take a depth size down to zero target polygon count pretty low maybe 10,000 hit zero mesh and I'm gonna zero mesh get some nicer topology and then project back the details Um, how to animate a rotation of a single object in ZBrush. Um, you can use the timeline for that. So if you go through here, you can go in here to movie, timeline, show. Um, the, if it was a simple translation, that's where, it, you know what, let me close this, it's bugging me. Um, if it was a simple, like moving from one object to another, like if you just wanted to, you know, do a mech component and just move something straight up and straight down, um, you can just use layers for that because that's just a simple one vert position to another vert position. Um, for rotation, it gets a little bit trickier. I don't know that you can like set a pivot uh, and like have a hierarchy and have it rotate around. You can mess around in here underneath timeline tracks. You have layers, you have contacts. Hmm. I'm not sure if there's a really good way. I, 
I haven't really messed with it usually and this kind of goes back to um, if you check out this playlist here where I was doing the ZBrush Summit so the ZBrush Summit playlist uh, not that one uh, you know what I guess it's fine um, this might be a little bit easier to look at profile here so we'll, on my ArtStation page has a lot of videos as well but in this particular one is the ZBrush Summit 2018 uh, and here I talk a little bit about you know when I'm doing animation and previs you know and setting up a hierarchy and rotating an object around a certain pivot I usually do that outside of ZBrush um, again as soon as I figure out how to do it in ZBrush I'll let you know but that would be the closest I could get to you <laughs> yeah I don't want to get kicked off YouTube by saying the word damn <laughs> let's see uh zero measure half you know what and i can just keep knocking this down this is actually fine but if you want to keep going down here in half and in fact if you want to do have a little bit more control oops over your mesh we did do a live stream so let's see playlists live streams full playlist here uh this uh latest one this will in the foe uh live stream here we went through and we did oh boy we went through and did a very precise um, breakdown for all the edge loops and stuff like that. So if you want to see all the previous live streams, check that playlist out. And you can see, you know, how to kind of set this up to be a little bit nicer for certain uh, geometry. But anyway, we got this here. We don't need that timeline anymore. So I'm going to say turn off show. And if I want to get my details back, first thing I'm going to do is go over here. I'm just going to cap this. Actually, you know what? Let's do... Okay, let's go over here and I'm going to say uh, close convex hole. And we're just going to, again, just cap this here, hit control W to make it all one poly group here. So again, I want, I need my details back. Uh, and how I'm going to get them is I'm going to go back through my history. So here's my detailed version. I'm going to control tap that and go back forward. Uh, so now I can just project history. So underneath our project options here, under subtool project, we have project history. Uh, so I can go through here and project history, hit control D, project history. Now I do need to be a little bit careful. Uh, in case some of these points start projecting to something that's not there, because remember, we got rid of this geometry when we were zero meshing, uh, but we seem to be doing okay. So I'm gonna hit Control D, Project History, Control D, Project History. We're back where we started. We have subdivision history now, and I can go through and just detail this thing out. So uh, you can always do that. And again, if I wanna step down through, and I wanna go over here to like geometry and go down to like subdivision level two, play with these major forms. Let me see if I got Uh, do I did I lose my reference here? Oh no, there he is. Oop. You know what? Let's do this. Control plus. Let's kind of see him a little bit better. Oh, it's another thing I can do now too. Oh, this is so great. So I'm gonna go through here. Let's go close holes. Let's say let's see, let's go ahead and make this a dynamesh. It can be pretty low res, I think. So now that I have access to a separate subtool. I can go through here and I can continue wrapping this around. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's just do this. Let's turn on Sculptors Pro with our Snake Quick Brush, BSH, Sculptors Pro here, and then remast. There we go, remast, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to go through here and now I can continue to wrap this around. So it looks like it goes. Do I have back face masking on? What's going on here? Hmm. Save as desktop. Seems to be stuck. Anyway, you guys know ZBrush Mini now. You guys know ZBrush. All that good stuff. I'll hop off. We're past six, seven, eight. Yeah, we hit our we hit our two. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the YouTube sound. If you want to create a turntable, you can use a movie option. Oh, yeah, if you're talking about just rotating an object, I didn't even think about that. Um, let's see.
So I just wanted to create a, let's see if this still moves. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. So we have this here. Let's go to geometry. So if I want to just create a turntable, that's where you can go in here to movie timeline. Uh, let's see, modifiers. So we want to spin frames is set at 180. We want to do overlay image. We're going to turn opacity down to zero. Title image, turn those down to zero. We want to spin 180 frames. We want to do, uh, we want to capture the document, not the whole window. We want to do large just to capture the entire resolution. Um, so now what I can do is I can say movie and we'll hit uh, turntable. And then I'll go ahead and record. Oh, I should have turned off the cursor too. Eh, I may not have captured it. Okay, so then we can go in here to movie and we can say uh, play it. Oh yeah, my cursor's in there. So here's, here's what we'll do. We'll say movie, delete that movie. And we're gonna say, um, sorry, it's been a while since I've been in here. Cursor size down to zero. Uh, so now when I do my turntable, it'll go ahead and do a turntable for us. And then if I want to export, and in fact, you can create more movies on top of this. The more movies you create, it's just going to stack them in here, uh, one after the other. But now when I go in here to export, I can say export onto my desktop, ZBrush movie. Uh, and there you go. Now, of course, you can also use um, BPR. You can hit BPR first, get some shadows, get some AO. In fact, you can go in here to render preview AO. You can turn that on, you know, while you're doing this, or you can even... You know, you, you could render AO uh, again with your BPR. You just gotta hit BPR first and then go in here to movie turntable and then it'll render every frame with BPR turned on. Cool. Uh, H polish and trim dynamic just to make things flat. Is there a brush that makes surfaces equal? Um, I'm not sure about the surfaces equal part, uh, but essentially trim dynamic, well H polish will polish to a flat surface and then trim dynamic will trim something also to a flat surface so they can go back over this with uh, H polish. There's a whole bunch of trim brushes though. Go in here to brush, I'm on a PQRST, trim, trim dynamic, trim smooth border I use, uh, trim adaptive sometimes I'll use. I'm not sure about the equal part though. Uh, item floating, want that item to spin. Yeah, that might be uh, tougher. I export my mesh correctly from ZBrush so when I bring back the cloth, it's of the same size. Um, So in, I would I would start with the right scale. Um, basically, playlist here, view full playlist. I got a uh, ZBrush scene scale, how to import properly and maintain scale. So this will be... Check that video out. Um, oh, here we see. Radial symmetry. So here, oh, this should be this should be able to be done with, um, let's go out of edit mode here. Let's switch, hit control N, go into comma key, go into project. And I think there's some array meshes that are already set up like that. Oh, no, nope, they're going to be under arrays here. So I'm going to grab this array mesh. Oops. <laughs> hey, you know what? This is kind of cool. So here's my, here's my array mesh, my radial symmetry array mesh. And I turn on polyframe. You see, this is the array mesh that I'm, doing so you could set up I think that's this is kind of silly let's go uh, out of a mesh here I'm gonna grab just a new switch cylinder here edit make poly mesh 3d geometry edge loop delete loops here there we go so here is our um, or you know what I guess it would have made more sense to do this let's just recreate this real quick uh, initialize we're going to do an inner radius here. We're going to do a make poly mesh 3D, and then we'll delete the loops out here. Maybe drop the angle down. There we go. So now we have this shape here, and we want to make it a heart shape. So we're going to turn on X symmetry. 
kind of get that heart shape going. But then it's like, well, I want this to be rotated around in a circle. Well, that's where I would go into the uh, ray mesh here. And you don't even have to go in there. You can actually go down here to ray mesh. You can say light box array presets. We'll put it into a circle here. And now I'm just gonna kind of scale this down so you can see it. Let's say lock position, lock size. There we go. So now uh, we have kind of what you're working with here. And if you want fewer repeats, obviously, if you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe, we'll say something like this. Okay, so now uh, we have a ray mesh here, like so. So it's still radial symmetry, but if we go through here and now we say, let's dynamesh this resolution, let's dynamesh this result. Um, we still have X symmetry turned on. So we can sculpt an X symmetry and still have kind of radial symmetry uh, along here. Let's go ahead and crank this resolution up a bit. So now if we go through here and say, you know, Damien standard or whatever you're kind of sculpting along here. And uh, this, this X symmetry seems to be off. So I'm gonna do a really quick, um, let's turn off array mesh. Let's do a mirror, mirror and weld. There we go. And then turn array mesh back on. Okay. Now we're in good shape. Our, my, my X symmetry was off a little bit. So now it's going to look like this to start with. You know, and you can go through here and you can like eh, let's round this out a little bit. There we go. But then when you're done, you could dynamesh this all together. But I would, this should work still, I think. Yes. That's the cool thing about it and kind of a crazy thing about it. Um, <laughs> awesome, thanks everybody. Um, do you prefer clay or clay buildup for scoops? I'll turn that off. Clay or clay buildup for sculpting? I'm not sure which one to use if I find myself adding detail with buildup than having the remesh smooth and losing them. Um, use clay buildup with a very feather touch. Uh, it's a, just a personal preference. There's a lot of people who swear by clay buildup. Um, you can use clay brush. You can actually split the difference, say clay at a square alpha, you know, and that can kind of harden it up kind of like the clay buildup, but give you more of a, you can also do like, you know, clay buildup here. See how it's kind of leaving those tracks behind. Um, you know, so you can use clay buildup. You can also go in here to uh, stroke modifiers, crank up that roll distance to like five and that'll smooth it out. I think I saw that from Magdalena. Um, so now you'll get a smoother stroke. You know, but you'd still probably want to drop that Z intensity down quite a bit. So, but like you're right, if you if you find something and it's just kind of a pain and it's not, you, you're you're fighting the brush, you're end up having to do a lot more cleanup. Um, then yeah, maybe there's nothing wrong with a clay brush. I would say which one do I use more? Probably clay brush, but honestly, that's just out of old old habits. You know, so you can go through here and then grab the clay brush. And then again, I just dump that alpha out of there. As long as you're not getting too lumpy or anything like that, um, should be fine. Uh, upload on your channel seems very useful in the future. Yes, so everything I do is dumped right into, uh, give me a minute to upload it after I'm done. Um, but if you go to my playlist section here, It'll be under the Big Blue Genie live stream full episodes. It'll be in there at the top. Um, poly painting, smaller brush stroke. Stroke becomes dots. Any solution would be helpful. Sub tool is high poly. Um, I mean, that could be the same thing probably for this too. So if I have my lazy radius off and I'm sculpting through, see how it just kind of turns to kind of dots stroke. You may have to turn on um, like a lazy mouse just to kind of even your stroke out or go slower or it'd be under here so stroke tap L to turn on lazy mouse and you can just have it on like lazy radius of one and that can that can sometimes smooth your stroke out um, you can also change the lazy step lower so it's even smoother um, you can even kind of maybe play around with a mouse average you can crank that up but probably lazy mouse and changing the lazy step down should fix that Cool.
yeah, drop intensity, lighter touch, and then roll distance up if you want to get rid of the, the striations between. Uh, can pressure sensitivity be changed in ZBrush? Yes. So underneath, you can change it globally or on a brush by brush basis. So here under tablet pressure, I think tablet pressure in one other place. Um, so here's global settings, you're going to use global settings, but in here you can change the size and the intensity for every brush here. Cool. Well, I'm way over, but thanks everybody for sitting through ZBrush Core Mini with me. Hopefully, um, you know, if it's interesting to you, check it out. It's free. All you need is a Pixelogic account. Download it for free and uh, play around with it. And then when you really want to graduate, we can go into ZBrush Core, which I'll probably do on my channel on Thursday. And then uh, we'll hop back into ZBrush probably because I just got to get back into ZBrush. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. And like I said, give me a minute and I'll upload this on my channel too.